<sighs> Catan. One of the main gateways from simple roll and move fare like Monopoly and the game of life to the realms of deeper board games. Here we find a game of resource management, economic development, passive aggressive jockeying for position, and races to plant your flag and claim the most valuable land for yourself before your rivals, just like the colonial powers of old. And of course, there is, at least in my opinion, one of the mechanics at the very heart of the game. Trading. Why waste your time sitting on a pile of by themselves worthless bricks when you can pawn them off to other players and create mutual benefit? setting the trading parties up much more favorably than their opponents. Well, maybe you're trying to prevail in a self-imposed challenge wherein you limit yourself to an extremely protectionist trade policy. Or put another way, perhaps you want to know the answer to the following question. Can you win Catan without trading? Now here's the deal, we're dealing with a strategic competitive board game, so theoretically we could win if all of our opponents were playing intentionally bad. That however wouldn't be a particularly interesting way to go about this, so to avoid that even potentially being an issue, we'll be playing Catan digitally on Catan Universe against three AI opponents set to master difficulty on the starting island. As for the rules, we are not allowed to trade with players or the bank. That means we'll be limited to just the resources we get directly from our cities and settlements, steal using the robber, and acquire by using some development cards. Our goal will be to win the game by getting to 10 victory points first. The main ways to get victory points are by controlling settlements and cities, as well as having the longest continuous road, and playing the most night cards. Alright then, now that we know what we're doing, let's start the game. The game begins with everyone taking turns placing their first settlements and roads. We are last to place our starting settlement, which does mean that some great spots are already taken before we get a chance to act, but also means we can place a settlement right after placing our first, which actually might end up being the better situation. For those of you unfamiliar with settlement placement in Catan, settlements are placed at the corners of the hexes, and can acquire resources from the hexes they border, when the number on the hex is rolled. The rolls are done with two six-sided dice, which means some numbers are more likely to come up than others. For example, 12 and 2 each only have a 1 in 36 chance of getting rolled, while 8 and 6 each have a 5 in 36 chance of getting rolled. Obviously, we'll be wanting our settlements placed on hexes that have high odds of getting rolled. Arguably more important, though, is making sure we at least have a chance to roll each type of resource. Since we can't trade to acquire resources we don't personally produce, being able to be fully self-sufficient in our production of all five resources is paramount. Those resources are wood, produced by forests, bricks, produced by hills, wheat, produced by fields, ore, produced by mountains, and sheep, produced by pastures. As I previously stated, we'll be wanting to place our settlements in positions that will give us access to all five resources, and given the board state, it seems that bricks will likely be our biggest consideration. As you can see, there are three hill tiles in the game, the three, six, and nine. We'll definitely want a settlement bordering at least one of those three. Let's start by analyzing the six. Vincent has already claimed part of it, which means since you can't build settlements right next to each other, these are the only legal places we could place a settlement bordering the six. And really, of those three locations, two seem completely awful since if we put our settlements there, then they would only border this tile, and therefore only be good for getting bricks. The other space isn't great either though, since it would get us a border with the bricks and this relatively bad ore tile. Although, the quality of that ore tile isn't even the main issue. No, the main issue is that this placement would gain us bricks and ore on our first settlement, meaning that ideally our second settlement should give us wood, sheep, and wheat. Unfortunately, there isn't a single place on the board where we could place a settlement capable of harvesting all three of those resources. Okay, so six is a no-go. How about nine? Well, this would be the only worthwhile placement on nine, and here I will complain about the quality, because the wheat we would be gaining access to is a 12, 
which is tied with 2 as the least likely number to be rolled. Not exactly my idea of a great place for a settlement. That brings us to 3, and this corner on it specifically, where we will be bordering the 3 bricks as well as the 8 wheat, and yes, a third tile, the 10 sheep. That means our second settlement needs to have access to wood and ore, which this spot seems great for. Now the AIs place the rest of their settlements before standard play begins. Each turn, players roll the dice, and whoever has a settlement bordering a number that was rolled harvests the appropriate resources. Statistically, our most frequent productions should be wheat, ore, and sheep. Those are the exact resources needed to build development cards, which can do a number of things that may end up benefiting us. A development card is the first thing I build, which turns out to be a knight. This guy may prove useful later. It should be noted that I'm not just blindly building development cards whenever possible. As ideally, I'd prefer to upgrade one of my settlements into a city, which harvests twice as many resources. That costs 2 wheat and 3 ore, so I'm trying to save up that much while ideally keeping my overall inventory below 8, so when a 7 is rolled, I don't get robbed. That didn't exactly end up working out, though, as the robber reared his ugly head when I had 13 guards in hand. Now I've got to get rid of half of them. Luckily, that still leaves me with enough to upgrade my northernmost settlement into a city, hopefully bolstering my ore production and making future city upgrades easier to achieve. Of course, someone placing the robber on my mountain, thus completely stalling my ore production, doesn't exactly help with that. Here is where the knight comes in handy. Now we can move the robber elsewhere. Hooray! And then they move it right back. Development card it is. Oh, a knight. Wonderful. I ended up using the knight to steal some bricks from Jean, which allowed me to build a brand new settlement right here. Once again, I was stolen from right before I was going to upgrade a settlement. Luckily, once again, I was able to keep all of the resources I needed for the process. And man, is it nice to get double on those rare brick rolls. They tried shutting down my ore production again. Luckily, I rolled a 7 almost immediately, freeing my mines. Honestly, at this point, the robber tug of war to shut down each other's minds is getting almost comical. Also, new settlement time, and development card time, cause why not? And what do you know, looks like it's time to upgrade another settlement. And you know what? Why not play another knight and secure the largest army bonus for ourselves, putting us at 9 victory points? Really, at this point, we just need to upgrade one last settlement, and we win. Which is exactly what we do. Meaning, that yes, you can win Catan without trading. It's just all about building up a generalist, self-sufficient economy, and at least a few lucky rolls. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I imagine you might also like a chess video I made along similar lines, or my Mario Party videos. Or perhaps you might even want to check out my Let's Play channel, where I'm currently playing a couple different variants of chess. In any case, guys, if you did like this video, please like it, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, I've been Simicraft, getting back to making more super videos for you all to enjoy. Goodbye.